very warm welcome to all of you. We are in an education system which is not part of our conventional system. It's very different because it is all through distant learning. And because of the constraints and also the advantages, of course, of this system, there are certain things that have been put in place in order to help and facilitate the learners as much as possible. So the one thing that we'll be talking about which is of such utmost importance to the distance education program is learner support services which have various aspects and we'll be dwelling upon a couple of them today. So I have great pleasure in welcoming Professor Ramanujam to the studio today. He is with the division in IGNU called STRIDE and uh, he has published extensively on distance education, what kind of materials we need to provide to the students and how the distance education system works and should work. So very warm welcome to you Professor Ramanujam. Welcome. And Thank you. Before we start off with the learner support services, I did mention that you are a part of STRIDE. So IGNU, I know, has a lot of these acronyms in place. So I think we can start off by asking you to say what STRIDE actually is, mm -hmm. what it stands for, and what is its role in the distance education program. Um, thank you. Uh, STRIDE stands for Staff Training and Research Institute of Distance Education. When IGNU was started, in 1985 and when it became operational in 1986 there was a division called the Division of Distance Education and the Division of Distance Education was perceived to be pivotal in designing the programs and in 1993 with the help of uh, CYL and the ADB, Asian Development Bank and of course the Government of India there was a need to have an institute to take care of the needs of open distance learning throughout Asian region. And then this division of distance education was upgraded into an institute with full autonomy to function. And that's how the Staff Training and Research Institute of Distance Education, the acronym of which is tried. And it has the functions. Uh, to develop human resources broadly and then help all the schools and divisions within IGNO to do their activities, carry out their functions in a professional way, contributing to the building up of the open university system. That is the immediate uh, focus. And then we have to cater to the needs of all the state open universities and also distance learning institutes. The number is more than 200 right now and there are 13 or 14 state open universities including the private open university in Nagaland. Uh, we have 14 state open universities. And the third dimension is international. As a matter of fact, the programs offered by uh, STRIDE, PGDD and MEDE, they were the first ones to go international in 1995 and their presence is there almost in 35 countries in Asia, Africa and the Caribbean region. So that's how STRIDE became noticeable and became important. And the programs which STRIDE has been offering since 1987, they talk about all these systemic issues. And one of them is learner support services. Actually, learner support services is a was a uh, separate course in the previous uh, program of uh, MA, PGDD and now PGDD and MADE have been merged and we have MDE 413 and the title of that course is Learner Support Services. Well, in any kind of a new uh, university, Learner support services is a very, very essential component of mm. the entire system because obviously if there is no learner, mm. there is going to be no university. Mm. But why do you think it is of special importance in a distance education system like ours? Uh, well, uh, in any type of institution, 
land of support is inseparable in the activities of the university in the teaching learning process Absolutely. of the students if you take a campus based university that the land of support would mean what support the students get outside the class mm-hmm. and inside the class inside the class mostly you have lectures and tutorials outside the class you have the social life hostel life extracurricular activities libraries laboratories you also then, have people telling them about you know their aptitudes what kinds of activities they can take up that kind of thing that's also part of support services exactly because yeah. uh, in a um, campus environment mm. the ambience offers all opportunities for the students to interact with their peer group with their teachers with the mentors with the management and then get their issues uh, resolved their problems addressed and the kind of help they look for that comes forth but we are talking about learner support services in open distance learning in a completely different learning setting this is the fundamental difference right a lot of literature has been uh, produced particularly in the uh, uk context and in the european context how the human element is inseparable in distance learning hmm. the focus is on learning of hmm. course hmm. and therefore the learner has to get the support hmm. and what type of support the learner should get hmm. that gets organized institutionally and that should contribute to the effective learning of the learner and basically these support systems are necessary to minimize the degree of alienation Mm-hmm. when the students are not face to face with this uh, fellow students or with the teachers uh, an element of or why even high degree of alienation isolation isolation mm-hmm. academic isolation social isolation mm-hmm. they all become uh, really uh, uh, depressing factors could also lead to a high rate of drop out drop out yes. yeah to minimize that mm-hmm. to eliminate that kind of alienation then you got to bring in certain uh, helping devices right. they constitute the learn learner support system well you did talk about self learning materials and i think that uh, the interaction that you're talking about mm-hmm. and the learner support system that we are talking about i think it actually takes off mm-hmm. from the basic self learning materials so when we look at the kinds of materials that igno is producing and has mm-hmm. produced in the last 25 years or more mm-hmm. do you think that they are truly self learning mm-hmm. do you think that there is anything that needs to be done further not only in how it's being written mm-hmm. also in how it's being delivered to the mm-hmm. students uh in fact uh, the learner support should start even before the candidates become our learners how would that happen when we advertise hmm. in a situation where the supply is too short to meet the huge demand hmm. anything that is offered by any institution sells you may be i mean uh, reading uh, every year just before the admissions how many fake universities have been listed right declared to be uh, fake hmm. by the ugc and others hmm. and in spite of that students rush to take courses now that shows the demand and short supply now when a open university announces its courses students feel that here is an opportunity that we can get uh, admission to what we want to do i would like to reflect on one fundamental difference between the learners we get and the learners who were the focus of uk open university when uk open university was started in 1969 they primarily had the adult learners who were about 21 years mm-hmm. who missed their first chance or missed the first bus and waiting for the second chance of the second bus to catch up and therefore they did not uh, bother much about the other aspects like their qualifications and all they made an announcement these are the courses available from the uk open university anybody who is above 21 years can come and join first come 
first served basis. That was uh, the story. You mean they you did not have any basic no, qualification? No, nothing. Nothing. Because the learners had to assess their own capability to become students of the open university. They knew what would be the demands of the course or the program. And then it was their business to cope with that. Or else they drop out. Now, in the same system, study centers, regional centers, support services were also conceived by the UK Open University. We more or less adopted that approach in IGNO too. But then, if you look at the profile of IGNO students, it's very, very different. When we started our operations in 87, offering various programs, two programs were offered in 87 and then eventually so many programs, including BDP, BPP, BSc and all that. Now, this expansion actually changed the profile of the students, IGNO students. Initially, we thought students who were on the job or learners who were on the job yeah, who could adults, not go would to come. Mm. But then when we made some preliminary survey, almost uh, 40 or 50 percent of IGNO students were below the age of 21. Now, I understand almost 60 percent of IGNO students are in the age group of 18 to 25. What and are the kind of materials that we need to deliver to them? I think uh, we have to deliver what we usually claim uh, as the self-learning materials and these materials are being produced in IGNO with the help of certain pedagogic instructional devices mm -hmm. and these were imported to our uh, staff who joined at first stride conducts series of workshops in producing self-learning materials ideally those who undergo this training must apply what they learnt from the training programs and then all materials cutting across the disciplines should become self-learning self-learning in the sense you don't have the teacher in front of you and therefore the teacher has to be built in the materials that is one aspect the other aspect is you must make the learners independent. They should be confident to learn on their own mm. by using the resources made available to them. Mm. When I say resources, the term does not get restricted only to the self-learning materials. They can use other materials also through libraries, through online sources. And these days, technology has facilitated um, so much that it is only a trigger that needs to be given in the form of self-learning materials and much of it can be acquired from the market, from the e-learning sources, etc, etc. But then, besides these learning materials, the corpus of knowledge, you need to support them through an organized support service. So, the face-to-face -face element is a must and then assignments are very, very important. And then you have to prepare them to write their examinations. Ultimately, they must master the content. A lot of students uh, seem to think that uh, counseling sessions would actually be like attending a classroom mm. lecture. Mm. So what do you think is the true nature of counseling? Actually, again, we have to go back to the UK uh, model. In UK, they have a great facility with the language. Mm. English is their mother tongue mm. and English is also the medium of instruction. Mm. When we look at our situation, we have 22 major languages under the 8th schedule and 1,652 1, languages spoken in India and many of them have huge speaking population. So this is a complex multilingual situation. Secondly, at the higher education level, mostly our materials are written only in English. Mm. And in except the language and literature, mm. I don't think you have any program where you have materials written either in Hindi mm. or in any other major Indian languages. For example, I haven't come across mm. in IGNO, mm. any program in MBA mm. or computer science or any other subject, mm. 
in the medium of hindi hmm. maybe at the ba level they are given uh, some kind of translated materials yes. in certain programs yes. but as you uh, go up you have only english as the medium of instruction materials are written in english now this immediately poses a huge challenge to our learners who are heterogeneous hmm. when you say our bdp students they may be from different backgrounds they may some of them may be coming from the best schools and some of them may be coming from very very ordinary schools if uh, not very poor schools but then they get admission whether they are in a position to cope with the materials that we give hmm. so this will have to be taken into account when we produce self learning materials hmm. all the devices that we talk about in self learning materials that they should be clear they should be conversational they should be self directed all the features of self learning materials will have to be incorporated and that material when the learners begin studying should help them and should give them a feeling that the teacher is talking to them now that is one aspect then we also have other access devices you break them into smaller components you give them in text questions and you allow the students to self examine self assess themselves all these are built into it the next stage is assignments you have to give assignments to serve two purposes one is to learn and see how they are learning the other is to assess their performance and then face to face counseling sessions you no know, the student uh, goes to the counseling session quite often mm. thinking that it's going to be a lecture mm. but it that's not what it's meant to be ah that's right see what we assume that the students would have gone through the materials they would come with the list of questions they would ask uh, the academic counselors the teachers there to remove the doubts their doubts and give clarification etc etc but we should not forget the reality our students have not seen this kind of counseling before so they come with the expectation that they are going to be taught they will be taught yes now this is the basic issue whether you should be teaching or you should be only supporting the learner discussing something now this mm-hmm. is what i call a cultural transition mm. in the first counseling session if we assume that the students would come with a set of questions then i think uh, we are um, forgetful about the reality it is our business to anticipate that they would come with the expectation that we should talk now we should talk we should tell them maybe give a lecture for 20 minutes half an hour motivate them and focus your lecture with an objective to make them talk to make them interact and come back other. prepared for the next and session and then gradually after third counseling session or fourth counseling session probably they will be motivated and mm-hmm. they would go through the materials and then would come for what we call the proper counseling session mm-hmm. but whether that is happening or not i think that's a big question because mm-hmm. we don't have uh, any authentic information except the hearsay now the hearsay says people come the academic counselors come and take a class for 45 minutes or one hour and then they disperse and the number of students who attend ranges from 40 to 50 to 100 and Uh, 20 140 so it's such not huge, possible uh, to give an individual attention for, yes uh, anyone to give individual attention is not possible and therefore we have to take this uh, into account when we design the counseling sessions that's very very important and secondly i don't know i mean what kind of uh, thinking is there right now i have been saying from the beginning that we must attach the learners distance learners to one individual counselor if we have say 55000 academic counselors as you might have seen in many of the documents then each counselor should be made responsible for say 30 or 40 students of a particular program now that will help that that, that is the strength of the uk counseling system mm. the study centers have staff tutors and staff tutors they have a list of students in front of them and they interact with them they are in touch with them 
But in our case, it becomes almost optional. It's like going to a cinema hall. You go and take a ticket and watch the movie and come out. Now that will not be effective in making their learning or resolving really any of their meaningful. doubts. Yes. Because and again, some students come for the first one and they don't come for the next three or four. And they may, and every time you may get a new set of students exactly with whom the teacher may not have any kind of rapport. Yes. And he or she as an academic counselor would be at the fourth phase or the fourth uh, uh, story and the student would be at the bottom yes. and then there is a huge so then they have to keep repeating themselves yeah. yes. so these are some of the challenges which mm. we have to address and it is not difficult it's not difficult first of all we must focus on allocation of students to individual mm. counselors and then the counselors must be trained without training that's why i mean uh, stride and uh, other schools uh, they were expected to sit together and train the counselors see when i say training the counselors we should see you are a professor of english and i am a professor of distance education somebody may be a professor of history professor of engineering we are not going to train them in their subjects right but we are going to train them as to how to act and how to communicate communicate with their students when they are meeting student distance open learning system so that's very important that cuts across the discipline the kind of strategy that needs to strategy be strategy and the, the kind of uh, arrangement that should be there to support them now this is a must if it is not there for example let me take uh, the issue of assignments assignments have to be gone through by the academic counselors tutors they must write comments they must give their helpful teaching type comments for the students to see where they are and how they are moving around i mean most cases academic counselors don't write any comments mm -hmm. they give either marks and say well done a very general Keep kind of comment yes. and uh, well you have done well but it can be improved hmm. so how uh, can it be improved they don't talk uh, about then that then you write in comments like this what do you mean by this hmm. no be specific and these kinds of uh, non teaching comments will not help of course i can go on and on but it needs a separate program but we have to point out exactly where the student needs help and write comments now the biggest drawback in our system is every teacher should be made accountable hmm. for monitoring hmm. now that can happen only when there is a policy central policy that every teacher must write units every teacher must mark or go through certain number of assignments mm -hmm. and then they must also get into the monitoring business you get 2% first there earlier 2% or 3% of the evaluated assignments and then get involved in training academic counselors in your own subject unless that happens uh, we have study centers maybe 3000 4000 or regional centers 65000 permanent staff part time staff and all this and hundreds and thousands of students may come and attend a few counseling sessions all this will happen but these are all general i mean um, um, generally simple indicators but these simple indicators and the number of counseling sessions which are conducted will not be of great use the, this may be a starting point but you have to have a more focused meaningful arrangement for students to benefit from the support services as a matter of fact study centers are the immediate face of the university there's no doubt about it but then the staff should be trained they should be well equipped students should be given proper information what they can expect counselors what, should yes. turn up on time everything everything because the it is not difficult to monitor yes. we have the huge technological backup with the huge technological backup you can track the movement of are the activities of every counselor right and the progress of every student and the kind of involvement that every teacher full time teacher at the headquarters and the academics at the regional centers how they are involved in supporting the students learning that can be easily done but one must get on to the business thank you very much professor ramanujam this was a very enlightening and instructive talk 
we talked about the learner support services of a university which specializes in distance and open learning and beginning with self learning materials how it goes on to counseling and what kind of uh, materials need to be produced first of all and then the counseling and then the assignments and the end examination we hope that you have learned something from what has been said today thank you very much